like the Look at that. We had to fold Ace Queen because of the bubble. Dang, look at that. We would have been. Oh, man. We would have split that pot. Look at that. Ooh, we, we would have split that pot. I had to fold it, though, because we was on the bubble. And only five people get paid, and I couldn't risk myself going out and that dude. Winning. I do not have rights to this song. It's for entertainment purposes only. Put it down to five people in uh six dollar rebuy. Two hundred twenty-five people. Two hundred twenty-five dollars for first place. I can't believe that we folded that one. But it was the right play. You can't look on hindsight. You just gotta make the right play and keep moving forward. Even though like that, it sucks. Cause right there we could have been winning a nice little pot. But we had to fold because I see him. When I was talking about the coaching earlier, that's part of the coaching that my coach taught me. Uh, when it's down to the last people, and one guy's uh, about to go out. Or you got a feeling somebody's about to go out and you're down to the last people right before the money. You got to play tight because as much as you play, even though it's a couple of dollars for just making the money, you can't afford to miss opportunities where you make money when you're playing poker, especially when you're doing it professionally. Whenever you're doing it for fun, it's okay if you want to shoot for first and go out right before the money. But you got to at least get yourself in that money bracket as much and as many opportunities as possible. But let me double check. I'm pretty sure we are in the money right now. All right, we in fifth place out of the five people. Somebody might go out right here though, let's see. Yeah, we down to four people now, just that fast. And fifth place got paid 45, but now we're gonna at least get paid 56 because we are down to the last four people. And right here, if this dude folds, we are shoving all in. And we already know John, the dude Johnson to our left, he's pretty good. I know the guy to my right from playing on the site so much, Alpha Q. He's a good regular on the site. Fritchie, Frenchy on the top right. He's also a good player. The guy on the top right, he's actually a uh, state. Where a company pays for his games and he gets half of the profit. And the only reason I know that is because I used to be with that company too. But I decided to cut ties. Well, it was, it was basically mutual. But they'll pay for your games. And in return, they... Uh, they want half the profit. And if you lose money, you know, you got to make up that money before you can get a profit. For some people who don't have the money to play the games, it's, it's the, it is a good opportunity to be able to play on somebody else's money and try to print some money. But now that I'm working a full-time job and doing this semi-professionally, there's no reason for me to use somebody else's money and only keep half the profit. I can use my own money to uh, play the games and keep all my profit. And anybody out there watching videos thinking about playing, I suggest not being stake. And if you are being stake, I suggest like a friend or somebody you can make a better arrangement with rather than half the profit because it's just so much. But sometimes you got to do what you got to do, though. And anybody looking to be stake, coach, or anything, any of the above, leave a comment. Because I'm in the coaching, 
I ain't into staking, but it's possible I can get into it later. But definitely any coaching, comment. All right, Ace King, we're going all in no matter what happens right here. And like I say, it's down to four people. We guaranteed at least $56. That ain't bad off an of $18 buy-in with the $6 rebuy and the add-on. Okay, we get a call by the big stack. Hopefully he has an ace too, and he does. No 10, we're good. We put a bad beat on him earlier, so we can expect to win. That's what I'm talking about. Let's go. Another crucial double up, and those you gotta have to win these tournaments. It's not easy to do, and once you all in there, it's all in the cards. But what you can do is do what you've seen me do while I'm playing this tournament. I'm not pushing any two. I'm not trying to muscle and bluff people. That's where I feel like a lot of beginners and people inexperienced get in trouble. Patience. A lot of people don't think much about patience, but patience, it's, it's more than just a word. It's, it's a skill, and it's... it's it's something that can be learned. You can learn to just chill out, wait for your spots. And like the 7-8 that I shoved earlier, and, and he called me with a 7-8. It's some spots that it's not because of your cards. It's just situational. And the math, he's not going to have a hand enough to call me. So that's already plus EV. And that's going to be a positive making money over, uh, over the long run. Are labeled and marketed as health foods. When right I here, uh, you, you'll be we could and make a raise and play them on the uh, post flop, but I would actually never. rather ship all in while somebody uh, somebody raises my bit blind like I'm like I would raise his, somehow, rather than in the US, raise and play a pot because I got so little chips. I mean, I say so little. I I got quite a bit, but uh, some of the items I'm going to share with you today. I'd rather make a make a shove on somebody else rather than calling and that's another mistake a lot of beginners make they they call too much and they don't uh raise and shove enough and right here this is a a fairly easy shove but because i feel like i, I was actually thinking about raising it but i'm just gonna go ahead and shove it i mean, i feel like frenchy pine he's gonna be three bet shoving all in on me a lot so i'm just gonna shove it and he actually might call me light. No, he does, fold. But I've shoved two times already in his uh, big blind. This is another shove that I could make. But because I got so many chips, I'm not going to shove it. I'm actually going to just raise. And because I've shoved so much, I feel like I'm going to get a lot of respect. And they'll probably fold to me, thinking I got a big hand. But we'll play it as is. Alpha Q, he might shove on me. He might call. He, de he does call. And we're going to make a... Just a standard half pot raise. And hopefully he folds and we take this pot down, no problem. But if he plays back, we're basically giving up. If he calls, we're checking it down, giving up. If he shoves all in, we're, we're, we're folding. And it's good to have a plan. And he does raises right there. It's good to have a plan before you, uh, you get to that spot. Because if you don't, a lot of times you can get into a spot where you don't know what you're going to do. But when you got a plan before you even get to that spot. That's the best way to play. And right here, if I get shoved on by Alpha, I would have called him. But Frenchie, I can't call because his shoving range is actually better than Alpha Q. I'm probably ahead of his range, but, but not enough to risk this call. Because the difference between fourth and third place is almost $30. And it's not worth making a high variance risky call right there when we're ahead but only just slightly with the sixes most of the time we're going with it unless alpha uh shoves we probably a fold but we're definitely shoving all in with the sixes actually it's not many hands not many uh spots we're gonna have to be able to get chips and spots where we got a pocket pair to start the hand blind versus blind most of the time we're way ahead of his range he is calling very light but we got to take our chances with sixes. Because, like I said, there's not going to be any, be many spots for us to make a hand. 
This video is getting down to almost 10 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it and go to the next one. Thanks again for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, notifications. Thanks for watching. Peace.